at what point um, was it just like, oh, this seems cool, or was it something where it's like, oh, I, I, I think that there's probably more to perception or something along those lines? Yeah, after my first cannabis experience, first handful of experiences, I had psychedelic experiences with cannabis, which people will sometimes tell you about, where I remember smoking one bowl, going to bed and having closed eyed visuals of all kinds of colorful patterns, not too different from what you might see on a different entheogen or psychedelic. And that opened my mind in a million ways to thinking about what else is out there? Why didn't I learn about this? Why did I learn in school that weed scrambles your brain and makes you stupid? Yet most of the people that I know who are interested in weed are creative, intelligent, artistic, musical people. And those two, that cognitive dissonance didn't line up. So then next thing is I'm on Arrowwood forums. So I have a great debt of gratitude to the Arrowwood forums, as many of us psychonauts do, because there wasn't a lot of reliable, comprehensive information around back in the day. You had your drug education, quote unquote, your D.A.R.E. program. You had friends telling you stories, but you know those varied in intensity and quality. And then at some point, I discovered Arrowhead and I just started going down all the forums, started reading as much as I could, and I became really fascinated by mushrooms. I got to travel quite a bit and I would hear these stories from people about like in their cultures that they would go foraging for mushrooms. And at some point, just hearing the stories, reading on Arrowhead, having really positive experiences with cannabis, I decided to go for it with a few friends, had a 1.7 gram dose. So definitely more than a microdose. I'd call it a museum dose. And I'm still very fond of that dose where I was in a carnival atmosphere at the Del Mar Fair in San Diego. I saw Ozo Motley play. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Incredible. I mean, the whole thing sounds delightful. I don't know about the band, it, but I, it I mean, great. It, yeah. it was a really cathartic, beautiful experience. Opened my mind to the possibility that there was a lot more to the picture here. And then I discovered Terrence McKenna. You know, there were only limited information sources in my world at that time. And uh, one thing leads to the next. And then I dove in head first. And the, the trip continues, my friend. Yeah, you mentioned musicians. I mean, that's how we got myself, Maurice, my co-host, when he's on here. Uh, and he's not on here most days now. But uh we are cousins and we grew up like into fish grateful dead almond brothers that kind of stuff so like that was part of that culture you know you go to a fish show and there's shakedown street and everybody's offering you basically everything you're describing so like that was all part of that culture we were fascinated to we were reading like electric kool-aid acid tests when we were in high school and on the road and dharma bums and all that kind of stuff too so um but it's cool that like everybody's got like a different origin story on like how they got into all this stuff too. Um, but when you look at what's going on uh, now, um, do you feel like having that background or having been associated with these things for like a while that maybe it, it's it's a little bit easier to poke fun at what you're seeing now? Because like you said, everybody takes it so seriously. There's money at stake. There's just a, it's a whole different ball game than like scoring you know, a bag of mushrooms or, you know, when salvia was like available at pipe shops and things like that, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a completely different thing now. So like, do you, do you think it's easier or do you think you have to get more creative when you're creating the satire? A little bit of both. I think, you know, it was a long wind up to get to the position I'm in today. And it went through a lot of different iterations over the years, playing in bands, being very interested in psychedelics. I went to school in San Francisco. That was where I got my undergrad. So I was living a stone's throw from Haight Street and from Golden Gate Park. And I spent five years there. And my freshman year, I had access to anything you could imagine and really high quality of it just by virtue of being connected to this sort of artistic and tech community there. My first semester within the first six weeks or so, I had a half gram of really potent DMT. And that's an atypical college experience in 2007.